I think it is a big problem that education has just kept raising the price, raising the price, raising the price. And they say, but college educated people do better. <laughs> it's a big bargain. But maybe they do better because they were better to start with yeah. before they ever went to college. Yeah. And they never tell you that. It, and, it's a ridiculous argument. And, yeah. and, and, and so, I think that's one of the silliest statistics that they publish. I mean, to, to say that a college education is worth X because people that go to college earn this much more than the ones that don't. You're talking about two different universes, and to attribute the entire difference to the one variable that they went to college as opposed to the difference between the people who want to go to college and have the ability to get into college. It, it, it's completely nutty, it's a fraud. and seventy percent of the people believe in it. So it <laughs> gives you a certain hesitation about relying on your fellow man. Eh. So I think most people just have to struggle through with the system the way it is. There's a big tendency to have prices rise to what can be collected. And people just rationalize that the service is worth it. And I think a lot of that has happened in education. And, and of course, a lot is taught in higher education that isn't very useful to the people who are, who are learning it. And of course, all of those people would never learn much from anything. So it's really wasting your time. And, and that's just the way it works. So I think there's a lot wrong. What I noticed that was very interesting is that when the Great Recession came, every successful university in America was horribly overstaffed, and they all behaved just like 3G. They all, with a shortage of money, laid off a lot of people. And the net result is they all worked better when it was all over with the people gone. And so this right-sizing is, is not all bad. I don't think there's a college in America that wants to go back to its old habits. And, uh, but you put your finger on, it is a real problem to look at those sticker shocks. And it's like any other problem in life. You, you have just to figure out your best option and just live with it. We can't change Villanova or Fordham. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. And, and as long as it works, they'll keep raising the prices. And it'll keep working. Yes. Um, and that's pretty much the way the, the system works. When it really gets awful, there's finally a rebellion. We, we do think that the priesthood, uh, say 30 years ago, for example, in terms of, or 40 years ago, in terms of efficient market theory, they, they, they strayed pretty far in, in our view, from the reality of investing. And I would rather have a person, if I could hire somebody among the top five graduates of number one, two, or three of the business schools, and my choice was somebody that had, uh, was bright, but had chapter eight of the intelligent investor Absolutely, it just was natural to them. They had it in their bones, basically. Um, I, I, take, I take the person from chapter eight. It, it, this is not, what we do is not a complicated business. It's gotta be a disciplined business, but it, is, it does not require a super high IQ or anything of the sort. Uh, and um, there are a few fundamentals that are incredibly important. And you do have to understand accounting and it helps to get out and talk to consumers and start thinking like a consumer in many ways in certain industries and all of that. But it just doesn't require advanced learning. And uh, I, I, I certainly, you know, I, I didn't want to go to a college, so I, I, I don't know whether I, I would have done better or worse if I'd uh, just quit after high school, uh, you know, and read the books I read and all of that. Uh, I think that if you run into a, a few great teachers and they really change the way you see the world to some degree, 
you know, you're lucky and you can find them in, you can find them in academia and, and you can find them in ordinary life. And uh, I've, I've been extraordinarily lucky in having great teachers, in, including Charlie. I mean, Charlie's been a wonderful teacher. And, you know, the, any place you can find somebody that, that gives you insights into things you didn't understand before, maybe makes you a better person than you would have been before, you know, you get, that's very lucky and you want to make the most of it. If you, if you can find it in academia, make the most of it. And if you can find it in the rest of your life, make the most of it. Yeah, I think that if you expect a lot of efficiency, financial efficiency in American higher education, you're howling at the wind. The, 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 monopoly has kind of, and bureaucracy have kind of pernicious effects everywhere, and the universities aren't exempted from it. But of course they are the glory of civilization. And if people want to give more to it, well, I'm all for it. I was the trustee of a college that saw the endowment go from $8 million to over a billion. And I didn't see the tuition come down. And I didn't see the number of students go up. Nothing went up, uh, except the professor's salaries. Yeah, from eight million to a billion. I mean, and, and, and very, very decent people running the place. But when you read the figures on endowment of the big schools, uh, you know, and some of them have really gotten up into big numbers, the main objective of the people running the endowment is to have the endowment grow larger. <laughs> And uh, that will be ever thus. That is the way humans operate.